Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about how to do an RRSP meltdown and what that is. Now there's lots of videos on YouTube that talk about RRSP meltdown. Now we have a bit of a different strategy. We don't think that you have to borrow money to melt down your RSP. We think that there's a much more simple way to do it. So I want to walk through that process with you in very simple terms. And we're going to go through our financial planning software that we use with our clients to really break it down, show you the benefits of it. And really in this case, we're gonna show you how we added $88,000 of income in retirement for this single person with not a whole lot of savings in a very simple manner. So let's go through that uh, and break it down in different scenarios. Quickly before we jump into the content, I just wanna remind everyone of our masterclass. So if you haven't checked out our masterclass, we'll put a link below. What our masterclass is, is basically financial education. Everything that you did not learn in high school, post-secondary school, or even in life, throughout life. Um, so we cover everything from budgeting to savings to investing, uh, real estate, mortgages, uh, government benefits, how to retire, the difference between a financial plan and a retirement plan and a state plan. Um, so all these things we dive deep into. There's over 100 videos that I put together, uh, content, downloads, all that. So click the link below, check that out, see if that's the right fit for you. If you're looking to kind of enhance or up your game as far as financial literacy, just learn more information and not sure where to go for trusted information, our masterclass is the spot for you, so check that out. So as I mentioned, in today's video, we're actually gonna use the financial planning software that we use for our clients day in and day out. So hopefully it'll give you a good idea of you know how a financial plan should be built out, kind of the numbers, the detail that you should be getting on your end if you're working with a financial planner. Here's the type of detail. Now, we've kept this scenario quite simple. So it's a single female, 59 years old, turning 60 in January of 2022, okay? so. About six months away from now, she's turning 60 and planning to retire, okay? So she's earned $60,000 a year and has worked her whole life, okay? So she has, we've assumed 90% max on the um, CPP, maximum on the old age security, and she's been saving 10% of her $60,000 income for 30 years. So she has a bit of an RSP, no TFSA. So she's basically been putting 10% of her income into an RSP to save a bit of money on tax and to build a bit of a retirement plan. So that's the Coles notes of what we're going through today. The reason I kept it kind of simple, and I will say we put life expectancy to 87 because often I'll use examples that we, you know, we, we will always plan to 95 or even 100 if someone requests it, but always 95 and everyone fights back to me in the comments saying, but Adam, no one lives till 95. So why do that? So in this scenario, again, retirement at 60 and I've actually put her death at 87, which is average life expectancy. Again, I know I'm going to get comments saying it's 81, 82, depending where you look, but I put it at 87. I think that's more realistic. Maybe um, I want to make this as realistic as possible um, so that when you look at those numbers, you're like, oh no, this actually does make sense. It does that up because it does. A lot of you fight me on rate of returns and life expectancy and all that. And all those things do make a bit of a change um, in the end game. But the reality is these strategies work for 95% of you watching these videos. So, you know, tune in, watch how we do this process. And, and I, I almost guarantee you, you could apply it to your retirement plan moving forward. So let's jump into scenario number one. Now, scenario number one is, um, again, retiring at 60 and she's taking her CPP at 60, okay? So the, the main differences between the three scenarios we're gonna break down is scenario one is CPP at 60, then CPP at 65, CPP at 70. Now, if she retires at 60 and delays her CPP, that means we need to take more out of the RSP earlier, i.e. the RSP meltdown. We wanna draw that out earlier, deregister it earlier. So let's look at scenario one, and I know there's lots of numbers on the screen here. Um, so I wanna break it down, but this is our financial planning software. Again, not too much detail in here because it's a pretty simple well, single person uh, with really one account in the RSP. But let's look at this. So as you can see here, if I zoom in here, in real dollars after tax income, she's going to have $32,219 every single year in her pocket in today's dollars, okay? That number beside the 32,219, so the 32,863, 33,520, that's nominal dollars, okay? So that's not adjusted for inflation, but that's the actual dollar amount she'll have in her pocket which is equivalent in today's dollars of 32,219. So as you plan for retirement, make sure that your income stream that goes over time is also adjusted for inflation because everything we buy next year is going to be a little bit more expensive than what we buy this year. So you need to make sure your income adjusts accordingly, okay? 
Um, so if we back over here, what I want to look at next is her RSP. Okay. So if I zoom into her RSP here, we will see that it's a fairly consistent uh, draw out of here. So 29, 29, 30, 30, 30. So as you can see there, it's a very consistent draw out of her RSP, right? It's, it's pretty level. Now, her tax rates, again, pretty level as well. Earlier on, it's a little bit higher <clears throat> and then it drops off to 7%, okay? So again, it averages you know from 65 on about that 7% through lifetime. Now, her after, um, her estate before tax and then tax on estate, again, we break that down as well. So if she said, hey, look Adam, if I all of a sudden die at 70, what does my estate look like? And I could tell her, look, you're gonna have an estate of 318,000 and because most of it is in your RRSP, you're going to pay a fair amount of tax, $135,000. So that's the balance. So you have just under $200,000 left in your estate for your beneficiaries, for charity, whoever you're passing that money to, okay? So again, that's important as well, especially as you're planning as a single, because when you pass away with an RSP, you can't pass that on to a spouse or common law partner. That's going to be taxed at your marginal tax rate, at your, at your you know, added to your income for that year. So just be aware of that, okay? So uh, if you die early with a large RSP and you don't have a spouse or common law partner, it's essentially close to half of it is gonna go to the government, okay? It's added to your income in the year of death and then taxed accordingly based on the tax rates in your province, okay? So be aware of that, okay? So just highlighting this, again, annual income, 32,209. She's gonna pay total tax of 105,185, okay? And I'm gonna highlight comparing all three scenarios at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that and I'll show you the breakdown of all of them because we're gonna increase her income, um, both annually and total income, but her taxes increase as well. So although the RSP meltdown is a great strategy to increase her income, it can result in a bit more tax. But again, what's the end goal? Is it to pay less tax and get less income or get more income even if we have to pay a little bit more tax? Obviously it's a fine balance between the two, but we wanna maximize strategy and that means how much money can we get in your pocket based on the assets you've built up, okay? Um, so again, net estate at 80 if she was to pass away early is 118,000. Her average tax rate is just over 7%. And the total income she's gonna draw is $1.2 million, okay? So if we jump to the second scenario, and here you'll see we have CPP starting at 65 along with the OES, okay? So instead of at 60, we're now starting it at 65, okay? Her income has jumped a little bit, right? It was 32,219. We're now looking at 33,828, uh, okay? So as you can see here, income jumped a bit, which means that the nominal dollar jumped a bit. So she's collecting more money, okay? Which is obviously important. You know, as we put a retirement plan together for a client, we wanna make sure that we're maximizing that income. Now, one thing to note here, right? So if our income is increasing, but we're not taking any CPP for the first five years, where is the income coming from? Well, it's coming from your RRSP. Again, an RRSP meltdown. We're melting down that RRSP earlier. Okay, so instead of a kind of a level 25 to 30-ish, you can see earlier on, uh, she's pulling out about 40,000 up to 42,000 uh, for the first five years, okay? And then it drops to 20, okay? So we're deregistering her um, that money, that RSP money, a lot earlier, okay? Um, and then basically by delaying the CPP to 65, it's gonna be a higher CPP number, which gives us an average higher total after tax in your pocket income every single year Again, in this scenario till 87, shows 84 here, we've run it right till 87, okay? Average tax rate goes from 7.14 to 7.85, okay? So that's important to note as well, right? She's collecting more money, but she's paying a bit more tax on average, okay? So her average tax rate, again, is at 7.85 now, it was 7.14. So she is paying a bit more tax, but again, single lady, entering retirement, she wants to get the most after-tax income that she can get in her pocket. Again, if we're paying more tax, but we're still getting more after-tax money in our pocket, that's a big win, okay? So again, to highlight, her income, again, goes to 33,000, total taxes of 120, uh, estate drops a bit at 80, 98,000. Again, her goal in this scenario is to maximize income. So estate is the secondary product of the overall plan. Again, average tax rate jumped a bit, uh, but total nominal dollars, so total dollars in her pocket after tax uh, jumped to almost $1.3 million. 
Now let's go through the third scenario, okay? Now this is a scenario that we would imply uh, and roll up most of the time for our clients. Again, there's situations that would tell us otherwise, life expectancy, things like that. But in this scenario, you'll see her income has now jumped to $34,000. How did we do that? We haven't added more to her savings, okay? She retired at 60 with a set amount of savings. We have not added to that. But what we've done is we've delayed CPP now until 70. And as you can see, instead of just collecting about 15,000, she's now up to $23,000 per year from CPP. That's massive. So where does the income come from? Hopefully you can answer that question by now. It's coming from your RSP. So all we're doing is doing the meltdown for a longer period of time, okay? So as we look at that, you can see the RSP meltdown, instead of for five years, we're now running it for almost 10 years, okay? Um, when her OAS kicks in, the CPP meltdown, or the RSP meltdown, excuse me, um, does pull back a little bit because she has OAS income. <clears throat> we could delay that till 72. It bumps it a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, we like to do CPP at 70, OAS at 65. Usually there's a bigger benefit to delay CPP than OAS. So that's usually the strategy that we'll use. But as you can see, RSP meltdown earlier, it means that she has less RSP later. If she dies earlier, yes, there's less in her estate, but there's less going to tax. So, you know, that's, that's one thing we looked at. But at the end of the day, we've been able to increase her income from, you know, 32000 to $34,000. Or $34, so quite substantial. So here's a summary. This is what I want to break down. It's the difference between each scenario, okay? So again, scenario number one, is retiring at 60, CPP at 60, OAS at 65, which is you know kind of the default a lot of you are going to fall to, okay? So as you're watching this video, a lot of you are going to default to that option. Hey, I'm retiring at 60, I've paid into my CPP forever, I'm just going to take it. I just want the money. And look, I've said this in many videos before, I get that concept, but at the end of the day, you need to break down your numbers and make sure you're maximizing your income, okay? So in this scenario, you'll see, like you're losing about 2,000, leaving on the table about 2,000 after tax in your pocket for you know 30 or 27 years in this scenario. So that's a massive amount of income. So make sure you don't jump to conclusions. Make sure that you put a proper plan together because again, you know whether you hire a financial planner or you have a financial planner already that can put a plan together for you, spending a little bit of money to put together a proper plan to put in this case almost $100,000 back in your pocket that makes a lot of sense to me. So make sure you have a proper plan that you can roll out um, and follow accordingly. So um, as you can see here, uh, again, number one, CPP at 60, annual income 32,000. Okay, option number two or scenario two here is CPP at 65, number three is CPP at 70. You can see the increase in income, okay? We're about $2,300, $2,350 of extra income and that's after tax adjust it for inflation. So as you can see down, <clears throat> total cash in your pocket in scenario one is 1.2 million. We're up to 1.3 million. So almost $100,000 of more income, okay? After tax income. Because um, a lot of you are gonna say, well, Adam, you're paying 7% tax here and eight here. You're paying more tax. That is true. You're paying more tax. Total taxes paid goes from 105 to 127. We're paying 22,000 more in tax in retirement. But you need to focus on after tax in your pocket. If we're still collecting more money in our pocket after tax, that's a win, okay? So again, almost $100,000 more in tax for retirement. Now I can say this, if you're a 59 year old uh, female, male, doesn't matter, maybe you're a married couple, and this is close to your scenario, and you can say, well, Adam, I was going to take CPP at 60. If I wait till 70, you're gonna give me an extra $2,300 every single year, for the life of my retirement. That is correct. That's how this process works. So again, gives you a bit of a snapshot in how an RSP meltdown works. Um, drawing down your RSP much earlier can be very beneficial for most of you. Um, you know, most of you haven't kind of broken this down of RSP early, CPP later. The other nice thing about this is by delaying CPP, what you're doing is locking in guaranteed income at a higher rate for longer, okay? Your RSP when it's done, is done. If you take it all out or the market crashes or whatever it is, it's gone. With your CPP, if you delay it and start with a higher number, 
that higher number runs for your lifetime. Okay, that's a guaranteed income. And I know a lot of you, yeah, leave the comments below. CPP is not guaranteed. It's running out of money. That's not the case. Do your research. It's funded for 71 plus years going forward. So do your research before you leave a comment because it is well, well funded. Um, it's actually performed quite well as well uh, as far as uh, performance goes. So check your data uh, and then leave the comment. But CPP will be there forever, okay, for you. So, you know, if you can delay CPP and guarantee a larger amount, if your RSP runs out or whatever it is, you have a guaranteed, almost like a pension plan for life, right? So that's another benefit of delaying your CPP and kind of melting down that RSP earlier. Again, a state after taxes is another thing uh, that we looked at in this video. Again, having less money, if you, if you pull out your RSP earlier, you're gonna have less if you die earlier, but less money is going to the government as well. So it's kind of 50-50. But again, if you're focusing on income, this is a great strategy to use. So thanks so much for joining us in this video. Again, gives you a glimpse of what an RSP meltdown is, the benefits of it. Again, this is a very, very simple plan as far as that goes, um, you know, breaking that down. Obviously it gets more complex with rental properties and more accounts and all that kind of stuff. But again, we run the same kind of concepts for most of our clients and it, and it gives similar numbers. So, you know, the more complex your world is, probably the bigger the number will actually be. So, you know, make sure, as you enter into retirement, you have a clear plan because just small tweaks, again, this, just a small tweak bumping CPP in this scenario gave an extra almost $100,000 through lifetime of retirement after tax in her pocket, which of course is substantial. So, you know, make sure you have a plan in place before you enter retirement. It will add money in your pocket, even if that means spending a little bit of money. If you want to find more about our financial planning services, we'll put a link below. It's parallelwealth.com slash FFS fee for service. So you can check that out, learn more about our fee for service or find a financial planner in your area that can help you out. So thanks for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.